Hello everyone, welcome to our series of uh, videos, Understanding Seabed, and uh, previously we started looking at uh, the first principle of uh, Seabed, and that is industrial alignment. We focused on uh, development of uh, occupational standard, and today I want us to look at uh, how do we develop curriculum from uh, occupational standard. And at this point, it's good to understand what a curriculum is. When you're talking about curriculum, it's a document that outlines um, the student experiences in a particular occupation that usually occur in the educational process. It encompasses um, the planned sequence of instructions that a, a learner undergoes for a specific period of time. And therefore, it's important that you understand that aspect. And uh, for each uh, occupational standard or occupation, rather, you need to develop uh, those planned experiences or sequence of experiences, and that is a curriculum. So when you're talking about developing a curriculum, the key documents that you need to have with you during that time, one is... Uh, the occupational standard and we talked about occupational standard that outlines all the core duties all the common duties and other enablers uh, you also need uh, a template a curriculum template and they're usually provided by CEDAC if you don't have one probably want to check for the curriculum for the content you also need uh, subject matter experts and these are trainers uh, on that specific occupation. So the people will understand uh, what to deliver. Uh, you also need uh, the inputs of uh, industry experts. And therefore this team needs to sit down and uh, actually develop a curriculum. Uh, when you're talking about uh, developing a curriculum in the context of CBET using an occupational standard, the unit of competency in the OS when it comes to curriculum now becomes the unit of learning. So unit of competency becomes the unit of learning. Elements in the curriculum becomes the learning outcomes. And for each element, we have a performance criteria and that becomes the content to be delivered in the curriculum. So it's important you understand that. Of course, the assessment method as outlined in the occupational standard is the same as in the curriculum. The only challenge, uh, I mean, uh, rather, the only thing that you need to address is uh, for each learning outcome, you need to have a specific uh, method of assessment. And with the CBET, it is encouraged you, are, you have at least uh, practicals or any other method of assessing uh, skills. Uh, in the curriculum, there is a component on uh, suggested delivery methods. How are you going to deliver actually to achieve your learning outcomes? So you realize that all learning outcomes have suggested method of delivery. And it is important that uh, we understand all the active learner uh, strategies that we can employ in uh, achieving our learning outcomes. And of course, resources are outlined in the occupation, uh, occupational standard is the same as the ones required for the curriculum for that specific unit of competency or unit of learning. So you need to understand. Of course you have left uh, issues of codes, unit codes, which uh, we are going to discuss um, in our series of videos. Again something uh, we deliberately left is on the unit of hours. Of course for each unit of uh, learning we need to outline uh, the specific period of learning. How long will that take? So basically that's how you're able to develop a curriculum based on uh, uh, 
the outlined uh, topics or column said. So it's very important to focus on all that and how it changes from occupational standard to curriculum. And this is an example of a, a curriculum that was uh, developed from uh, occupational standard on communication skills. So you can see it has a unit code and this you pick the way it is as in the in the occupational standard and then you need to give a relationship of the unit uh, unit of competence in the occupational standard and how does it relate to uh, the unit uh, of learning in the in the curriculum so you'll see relationship to occupational standard this unit addresses the unit of competency demonstrate communication skills so you try to omit the the verbs and then you have the communication skills you can see there is duration of that unit of learning it's 25 hours the unit description so this one you pick from the OS and then you also have the learning outcomes and you say these are the elements as outlined in the occupational standard and then for each learning outcome you need to have content that you need to teach and that is the performance criteria for each learning outcome and then you have suggested method of learning for each learning outcome so basically of course as you go down uh, there is also identification of resources um, and many others so basically this is a, a way of uh, developing your curriculum from uh, the OS So let's move to assessment tools. Now you already have your curriculum, you have your OS. So basically for those documents to be approved by the relevant uh, offices, then uh, you need to develop at least two units of, uh, to at least develop assessment tools for two units of competency for approval processes and of course we'll be unpacking these assessment tools and are able to develop different assessment documents like assessment plan assessment requirements performance criteria weighting and from there now we can able to develop assessment tools assessment tools here now defines uh, the different uh, suggested method of assessment so you can have written uh, questions, um, you can have oral questions, practical questions, and of course there are marking schemes, observation checklists. So we're going to look at these and how we're able to develop all these tools in our series of video. Of course the CDAC, uh, TVET CDAC has developed uh, templates, and of course they have given guidance on how to develop these tools. So basically, for you to develop a tool, you need to be trained on uh, competency-based assessment. So these are training that give you an insight or skills on developing uh, assessment tools, specifically to assess a unit of competence. So it employs a variety of methods that you can use to assess a particular unit of competence. So we'll unpack this when we reach in the next principle of CBET and that is assessment of learning outcomes. When you already develop your learning uh, assessment tools, there is a need to develop what you call learner's guide. So this one uh, is just a guide that uh, is used to actually to guide learners on a particular unit of competency. So learners guides are is a document that provides learners with information and guidance on how to achieve the learning outcomes of a particular unit of competency. So it outlines how to achieve the learning outcomes. So it is designed 
to be a self-paced uh, learning resource but learners can also use it uh, with the support of a trainer or facilitators and you realize uh, for us to achieve all the learning outcomes in our curriculum you need to have at least accompanying learning a learner's guide and I'll show you an example of a learner's guide or you may have seen one it outlines what you need to cover for each learning outcomes so there are a series of activities uh, which include um, an overview of the unit so when you have a learning outcome you'll see there's an overview of the of the unit so you always see the unit title and then you see some introduction uh, purpose the scope and the learning outcomes it also entails a detailed bra uh, breakdown of the learning content so what do you need to teach as per the performance criteria in the OS but now we focus on the curriculum and that is the content to be delivered they also encompass activities and exercises that can help learners achieve each learning outcome so it's important as a trainer you as well focus on uh, the learner's guide to help you at least achieve all the learning outcomes in different uh, learner strategies so this learner's guide also uh, contain uh, assessment criteria and how you're able to assess all these learning outcomes and tools for learners to assess their own progress so you'll find their questions uh, mcqs and many other forms of uh, question just to test their ability to to assess their own progress and therefore it's able to identify areas where they need further support and basically that is what we call a guide and this also contain resources that you need and references for further learning of course our work as trainers is uh, basically to guide the learner to achieve the learning outcomes and therefore which which learners uh, active learning uh, strategies can you use for all this so that is outlined for most of the learners guide and now we see the importance of having a learners guide as part of uh, our curriculum but again it doesn't mean you overlook some other aspects of uh, of the unit of competency or unit of learning so it's good also to balance what you want to deliver yeah as much as uh, there is a learner's guide because you never know of assessment so what are the tips that you can use when you're using your learner's guide one is uh, you read the overview carefully because that gives you an insight of what the unit of learning is all about so you'll find their statistics introduction and many other things so it's good you read the overview so that you get an insight of that unit to uh, focus on the breakdown the learning content into smaller charts so you realize the learning content is broken down into smaller pieces so that you're able to have a chronology of uh, achieving your learning outcomes yeah, so they're broken down for for easy use and the aim is to achieve your learning outcomes another tip that uh, you can use with the learner's guide is uh, you complete the activities and the exercises because for each learning outcome there are assessment activities that are there to assess learners progress there was important that uh, you finish using different methodologies of uh, active learner strategies so that able to complete the activity and uh, assess the progress of each learner in the class and lastly is to use assessment criteria and tools to assess your own progress it is very important that for each learning outcome after each instruction then you need to carry out some assessment in different methods so basically today uh, we are able to cover development of curriculum 
and of course looking at the learner's guide so in our series of other videos we'll be moving on to the next principle so thank you for those who have subscribed and for those who haven't please subscribe thank you and thank you for your support